I am officially Heather Marzigliano from Grace on Broadway in Northeast Pennsylvania. Last week we worked on this table and so it is my hope that today we can finish it up. Last week we sanded this top down and I used the new Colonial Black Stain. Let's see, maybe this is a good angle for you guys. There we go. Okay. So this was Colonial Black Stain that we then put on the top. This size I did in Rustic Red. Um, I did this in Landscape today and it kind of it's making me a little nutty because my angles are weird and I feel like nothing fits, but we're gonna try it. So after we got off, I did a second coat. So this is two coats of rustic red and colonial black stain. So what we wanna do is today, we're gonna sand this down for distressing and for like finishing and by finishing what I mean is I want it nice and soft I want it to go to whoever's gonna own this and I want them to have it feel like a finished piece and not like just uh, like a chalky finish I want it to feel finished I want to bang out all of whatever paint lines I have whatever thick spots I have, we really want to make that gone before it goes to its final home. We want it to go there as absolutely finished as it can get, right? So, so that's what we're going to do in a finishing sand. And then we're going to use some wax. Um, I have some brown and some black wax. And we're going to kind of go in here and create a little bit of definition in these spindles. And we are going to do, how do you do hemp oil this way? Let's sand it down. So there's two different ways we can sand. I have, where the heck did it go? Okay. So I have these fun things called rad heads. These are by Surf Prep. I'm trying to get my other one. They come in a whole bunch of different grits. Right? They have, uh, a medical grade foam on the back and the adhesive on the front. So these, they're medium, fine, super fine, very fine. And what we can do is, this is the size of the pad. You don't need a full pad necessarily, so you can cut them. And then because they're foam, they'll wrap around when you need to do a spindle or something. And they won't crack or break and therefore they won't scratch your surface. So our first option is we can use one of these. And just kinda, you know, hand sand it. So I'm peeking it down just to where you kinda see like these edges peeking in. I don't wanna go too crazy. Um, but I do want it sanded back just a bit. So now I'll show you how, you, so the edges, you can literally just twist as you work your way down and you're getting that full spindle because these can go right around. It didn't scratch my piece in any way and it sanded all of it. So that's one way, right? We can go through and we can hand sand the whole thing. I don't use rough paper anymore. I just don't. Um, I've used solely surf prep products for a while now. So even hand sanding this leg was relatively quick, right? What grit did I use to do that? This is very fine. Which is the equivalent of around like 220-ish. So, I also have an electric sander. Ta-da! This should have, hold on, let me just double check. This has super fine on it. Should be okay. So, this pad has a 
um, a foam abrasive that's gonna allow me to go around all these curves and finish up this table in like two seconds. So it's gonna be a smidge loud, but we're just gonna get this done, okay? This hose is hooked up to my shop back, so it's gonna suck up all the dust. it took me the hand sand I just did the whole rest of the table now the secret is really in this foam abrasive because when you put it here see how it hugs the spindle I'm not sure if you guys can see I'm gonna try to let me see maybe you know what? I can show you better up here so see there's like a divot here you already go like this see how it fits right in there wipe back some of this dust so I have my mister bottle and some paper towels I'm just going to wipe back some of the dust I created I'm using my mister bottle because I don't want to saturate it in water because it's a water-based paint and I'm not trying to wet distress. I'm just trying to knock off any of that extra dust. So this is Dixie Belle Best Dang Wax in brown. It looks like pudding. And I have um, a t-shirt rag that I've used for brown wax last week, but I thought I could use it, but it looks a little a little extra worn, just a tiny bit. I use my finger and I start where I want dimension. So like in these corners up here. I'll put a little, I kind of trace my outline. Because if I'm thinking about a piece where it's going to be the dirtiest and the darkest is where people are going to come in contact with it, which is mostly around the edges, right? So this is Best Dang Wax in Brown. And now that it's on, in these edges, you can see I went a little bit thicker in some spots. I'm going to take my same rag with the same bit of wax and I'm just going to spread it out. And it'll all kind of blend in, but it'll stay darker where I put more to begin with. I need just a little bit more, but you can see how it's starting to, hopefully you can see on camera how it's starting to kind of take shape there. So the brown wax will tone your color also because as you can see, I did not put clear wax first. I did not put gator hide first. I went in on purpose just with my brown wax straight to my paint. I wanted this tonal look. So you can see this is a bit brighter than here, but I wanted this like real deep country old red. So for me, the best way to do that is brown wax straight on. It's not all perfectly even. I don't want it to be. Do you know anything that ages perfectly evenly? I mean, I don't. I will not put an additional sealer on this. This is enough of a sealer. There's no reason to put two sealers on anything. This piece is small enough that I can probably actually bring it over and show you guys a little bit closer what it's doing. Let's see. 
So, see how there's like a little bit of variations in the color. And then here it's just flat and brighter. Hopefully you guys can see that well on camera. Bright and flat, some tonal differences, and toned down. And here's our leg. He's coming out pretty with the brown wax and the sanding. Okay. Hopefully you guys got to see a bunch of that. <laughs> I'm gonna do just the front here, and then we'll move on to the top because the sides and the back are gonna be done exactly the same way. So there's no need to keep reiterating the same process. So essentially I'm just putting a little bit of wax on my rag and I'm kind of rubbing it in as, as I go. And the wax will probably find a home in the nooks and crannies which is okay, I want that. I want all of those things to stand out. I want those things to be a bit more pronounced. I want to celebrate its age. I don't want to, I want this piece to show that it's old. I just want it to be old in a new fun color, <laughs> right? like a slight shine as you work too. Not crazy, but just a slight shine. I'm using the Besting Wax in brown, and this is over rustic red. So now, I'm going to off camera continue to do the sides and the back the same way that we just went through the front with the brown wax. I'm gonna show you guys real quick one more time up close with the wax, and then we'll move on to the top. So for the top, I already stained it with Colonial Black last week. And then this is how the wax kind of looks. Let's see if you can see the depths in the spindles, hopefully. Okay. Now, our top is sanded. It has been stained. I'm just kind of wiping back just to double check that nothing else flew on it while we were just walk working. Because that looks like a couple of fuzzies. All right. There we go. Now you guys can see that. Now this table is an accent table. It is little. It's going to be probably used in someone's corner for decoration. It is not going to be a dining room table. No one's eating at it. No one's sitting at it. No one's doing a lot of things. So I take a lot of that into consideration when I work. And I really love how the hemp oil seeps into the open grains when you stain. And I love the look that it gives it. Because it's not a kitchen table or anything like that, I really don't need the, the sealant properties of gator hide. So I'm gonna go ahead and use hemp oil on this one. Just so you guys know, this is also a drop leaf. And I painted that divot um, here in the red so then when it's closed, it does that. Okay. So, these are the Dixie Bell applicator pads. And this is what I use to put my stain on. And now my stain is dried and crusty on this side. But you know what? I have this back side that's still clean, so I'm gonna use that because I don't like to waste stuff. And here's my hemp oil. And I'm gonna put a little bit on my clean spot. And I'm literally going to just work this in. Hope you guys can see all this goodness. But it is really bringing this tabletop straight to life. Let me see if I can pick this up and show you guys. Look at all that. Right, like it's just soaking in. It's 
into all of this. I'll have to pick my camera up and show you guys when we're done. Look at that, it's like immediately hydrating it and sealing it and it's bringing out all of the grain. I'm gonna try to lean it up so you can see it. Nope, this will seal it. Can you guys see? There we go, a little bit. There it is. See how pretty that is? I'm trying to show you guys best I can with my light working with me. Sometimes the lights are super helpful and sometimes they make things shiny but there we go so let me get my fingerprint back out of there so that's going to go ahead and dry and our top is going to be, obviously, I decided to do hemp oil, so it's a little bit shinier than the, the super rustic bottom, but I think I'm cool with that. I think that's fun. It doesn't all have to be exactly the same. I know nothing in my life is ever exactly the same or ages exactly in the same spots or, or anything like that. So I just decided to go with it. Um, so that will be enough to seal the top. And... The brown wax that we're using is going to be enough to seal the base. So there's no reason to now add like a second or a third sealer. So all of the products used on this table, we did white lightning to clean it. Then I sanded the top off with my surf prep sander. Uh, we used rustic red on the body. I used colonial black stain on the top. And then we used brown wax and we used hemp oil to seal the top and kind of bring it right back to life. Like, look at how that black is jumping up now. It's it's so full of life it's, again. If not, I love it. I might be using a lot of that stain in my future. This is my first time playing with it and now I'm obsessed. So, so get ready to see a lot of pieces like that. Um, we, I don't know, I love it. I'm just excited. I keep looking at it. Maybe this one will go to my house. I don't know, we'll have to see. You can head over to graceonbroadwaypa.com and get all of your Dixie Bell supplies. And um, I have all sorts of fun links on my page and all the videos I do. And I, I really appreciate you guys uh, joining me every Tuesday morning. And if you guys ever have like a project or lesson in mind that you wanna know, please feel free to message me or post it over on Grace on Broadway and I will definitely be here and do that. All right. I will see you guys next week, guys. Bye.